There's no more important issue one could have settled in their heart than to know they have a relationship with God and the promise of eternal life. So how does one come into relationship with God and gain assurance of eternal life? God's word is clear. They must receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word gospel means good news. There's good news in Jesus. It's important to know this good news begins with some bad news. The Bible tells us in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There isn't an exception. We have all sinned. And Romans 6.23 tells us the wages of sin, what we've rightfully earned, is death. The day sin entered the world, humanity died. Now, apart from Christ, when our physical life ends here, we enter an eternity of separation from God and punishment in hell. That's the bad news. Well, what's the good news? The good news is that Romans 6.23 doesn't stop with the phrase, for the wages of sin is death. It continues, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes, we were dead, but God made a way. That's the good news. Jesus, God the Son, set aside his robes of glory and came to this earth. He took on human flesh, lived a perfect life, and as the only sinless person ever to walk the face of this earth, he was wrongfully sentenced to die on a cross. There he willingly laid down his life and shed his blood to pay the penalty and take the punishment for the sins of the world. He died and was buried, but three days later he rose again. And because of his work, God now freely offers us an opportunity to be right with him, to live in relationship with him, to be forgiven, and to be assured when our life here ends, we can step into eternal life. How do we receive this gift? Romans 10.9 says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Confess. Declare him to be Lord of your life, consciously turning from doing things your way and simultaneously giving control of your life to him. And believe, knowing you're a sinner in need of a Savior, believe Jesus died for you and that he rose again. If that is you, call out to Jesus. Romans 10.13 says, Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. It's not about something you do or something you can earn. It's a gift of God. Ephesians 2.8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. That is the good news. And this very moment, God is extending that gift of life to you. The question is, will you receive it? Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. I'm going to do a video. I hope you find it to be an absolute blessing. We're a group of Bible-believing Christians who rightly divide the word of truth here on this channel. Subscribe if you're new. Thumbs up and get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the most important thing. What, what, what does that mean to you um, as a person? If you're not saved, you're a sinner in a sin state. Your past, present, future sins will send you to hell, and I don't want anyone to go to hell. So Jesus luckily for all of us in this church age, came down as God in flesh form as the Messiah, walked a perfect life, on purpose died for us. And 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is the gospel, and you can read that, where Jesus, he died, he buried, he rose from the dead, so he conquered death and hell. And as he resurrected, so can we, only if we are forgiven for our sins. And what does that? The blood on the cross where he died washes away your past, present, future sin when you have a full belief and, and you're counting on that to forgive you for your sins, as Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 say. And then Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, it says, It's not a work you can't earn yourself into heaven, lest any man can boast. Get saved today by the blood of Jesus Christ. It is the most important decision. If you get one thing out of this, take your salvation. It's a free gift in our time. Amen. going to talk out loud a lot of people in the, you know, there's a lot of things in the news. 70 Israeli soldiers were killed yesterday. And you have everyone, Hezbollah, ha Hamas, you have the Gaza Strip, you have Lebanon and Beirut, and you have uh, Iran shot the missiles on October 1st, and even U.S. has leaked the so-called plan 
which would include all military assets, including nuclear facilities. I do think that will still be delivered out. They might switch how they do it a little bit to catch them on off guard. But the important thing is to realize, hey, God's in control, and we're looking for our blessed hope, the rapture of the church. And a lot of people think that the Feast of Trumpets have come and go. I'm here to tell you, I believe the stars show us that it hasn't. I believe it's going to be early November, uh, second, third, fourth, somewhere in there, depending on the sighting of the new moon. And, and if you, again, Feast of Trumpets is a two-day holiday, so you'd have a couple different days there as a high wash period of time. I'm not saying the rapture will occur then. I don't know when it will happen, but it would be a good time for it to happen as the, as the Bible hints to it as the last trump. And during the Feast of Trumpets, there's a hundred shofar blasts, and the last one being very special and could be what's referenced. It's an idiom, and everyone knows what the last trump would stand for during Jesus' time, or Paul, and during Paul's time when that, that was written. So let's go to that scripture. Let's go to a couple of the, the verses. And I do believe we're going to know when the rapture is, maybe right before it happened. I'm not saying we're going to have 30-day notice or anything like that. Uh, only God knows that. Amen. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, which is an idiom, by the way, Sunrise, sunset, timeline. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So the first thing and foremost of importance is to note that in this verse, at verse 52, that this is not the last of the seven trumpets they're referencing, blown by the angels in the tribulation at Revelation 11:15. That's the first thing to, to make note of. Uh, a trump is not a trumpet. A trump is the sound that a trumpet makes. So God has a trump sort of sounding voice, and I'm sure it'll be the most beautiful thing we ever hear when we hear it. Amen. And so that trump voice and sound is, it will wake up the dead. It will resurrect the dead in Christ. Then we'll change the Christians. And I believe we'll expressly know within us when that's going to happen, because one, I believe we'll get the warning of trumpet sounds before our trump sound. I don't know how many sounds, but I would say at least two. Probably, and I can't, this is not biblical, I believe there'll be an earthquake simply like when Jesus resurrected, because you'll have resurrection of, at that time you had Old Testament saints resurrecting, and you'll have the church age saints resurrecting, and there, there was an earthquake that split the veil. I believe that earthquake was worldwide. I believe that will happen again at the rapture of the church. I can't prove it scripturally, of course. It's my opinion. It could be wrong. Either way, I think we'll definitely hear the trumpet sounds minimally. And at the last trump is an idiom for the last shofar blast of the, this is the hundredth one of the Feast of Trumpets, which again starts, no one knows exactly when it starts. It's based on the sighting of the new moon in Jerusalem. So I believe that is in November, early November, and it's something to look forward to. Now, that doesn't mean the rapture won't be at the Feast of Trumpets. It's just a high watch date. It may not be this year or it may not even ever be on the Feast of Trumpets. It could be, you know, anywhere between Pentecost, which is 50 days after Passover, or anywhere in between that and any of the fall feast. So it could be in any, in any of that period of time. I think it's the most likely period of time if we're looking at... Jesus fulfilling the menorah uh, and the feast days of, of that menorah in order. And and so that's the question, is he doing that? If he isn't doing that, then the raptures can be any day. And amen to that. It's only God knows, and it's imminent. The rapture is imminent. Paul was looking for it during his time. Paul was reassuring the church that they hadn't missed the rapture because they were being told that they had missed it, that they were being told that by others deceiving them that it had already occurred. And that's proof that it is it is imminent because Paul was looking for it for a reason. He thought it would happen in his lifetime. Remember, Jesus had promised that some of them would see everything that came to pass. Of course, they didn't realize that John, the beloved John, disciple of the Lord, would be the one from the island of Patmos that would be translated, spiritually speaking, up into the third heaven, his soul spirit would go there and see and write the book of Revelation. So he he did, during his lifetime, see all the things in the future. He didn't, he isn't, he, he certainly died on that, you know, sometime after that. And he, you know, he didn't live 
that long in terms of being a, you know, in his body, he died, but he got to see it. And that's what was promised. Jesus fulfilled that by bringing him to the third heaven to see the things he recorded in the book of Revelation. As we, as we wait and as we look for the Lord's return, remember, pray, remember, supplicate, pray for others. Remember that it's, that others can be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ during our time. Once the rapture happens, that changes the salvation plan. That's a different time. I always leave things in my Bible to tell those if they would ever run across my Bible. And I say this, when millions disappear, it's the rapture of the Christians. So what, what's going to happen next? I, I, I tell them that. Tribulation, chaos, God's wrath. You have a very important choice. One, you can have eternal life. This is in the tribulation. It's different than our time. So it, it, tells, it tells them to see the everlasting gospel, Revelation 14, 6, and 7. And it's faith in Jesus, not his blood atonement, but it's him as being God. Plus, you can't take the mark of the beast, so you probably have to be beheaded. Now, if you're a Jew... And you're the remnant of the Jew. Of course, you're going to be protected in the wilderness. That's and you have to make it through the tribulation. So that's a separate plan for them. Uh, obviously, if you take the mark of the beast, I, I do warn that they're going to go to hell for eternity in the lake of fire. And so they have that choice. And so I let them know what that choice is. But right now we have the age of grace. It's accepted, you know, free gift by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let people know how they can get that eternal salvation. It's a best gift you can give anyone. And I know a lot of people in this world don't want to hear about it because they want to live in their sins. They want to keep living the way they live. People, unfortunately, aren't taught to read the Bible as a young kid. They're not taught if they go to church, they just listen and they accept whatever the pastor says. And unfortunately, there's a lot of so-called wolves in sheep clothing teaching the wrong doctrine. There are many false doctrines, as I can show you that in First and Second Timothy and many verses, that that, that is the apostate apostate church in the time that we live in. I pray for each and every one of you. Leave your prayer request. Just a short message. God bless and have a great day.